Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on Newton's second law where we apply force equals mass times acceleration to a particle. And in this example, I've chosen this example purely because I think it's going to bring out some other features that I haven't used in some of my other tutorials in this series. What we've got here is a particle of mass 3 kilograms is projected up a smooth plane inclined at 20 degrees to the horizontal and it's projected at a speed of 2 meters per second. And the question is how far up the slope does the particle travel before it comes to instantaneous rest? So what we've got is our sketch here of our inclined plane at 20 degrees and our particle somewhere in the middle of the motion. And as I've said in the earlier tutorials, what I would do is suggest that you draw a kind of diagram here where the particle originally started. It's projected up the plane. It's going to start to slow down. And then there's going to be some point up here where this particle comes to instantaneous rest. That means it's going to come to a halt for just one fraction of a second and then it's going to start back down the slope again okay so it comes to instantaneous rest we should put that speed of projection two meters per second on the diagram here okay it's projected up the plane with a speed of two meters per second and it comes to instantaneous rest at the top then. So I'll put an arrow there saying it's come to rest at 0 meters per second. And because it's changed its speed in this direction, there must be an acceleration. So I'll mark that acceleration in in that direction and call it A meters per second per second. Now because it's slowing down, I will expect this acceleration, if I take upwards to be positive, I would expect this acceleration to be a negative value. In other words, it's decelerating. So we've got the velocities, we've got the acceleration here, and we need to know how far up the slope does the particle travel before it comes to instantaneous rest. We want to know how far it is from here to here. And this is a typical question for using SUVAT notation, okay? SUVAT, S being the displacement, and if we take upwards as being positive, then S, the displacement, will be this distance here. Well, we've got to find that, and we know U, the initial velocity, it was 2 meters per second. We know V the final velocity it was 0 meters per second we're doing SUVAT so SUVA well A we don't know okay we don't know that one and T for time we don't know that either so in order to work out S I've got to either know the time or the acceleration well it's the acceleration that we find in questions like this and we can get the acceleration by considering Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, when applied up the slope in the direction of the acceleration. But before we can do that, we've got to mark on the forces acting on this particle. Well, there's always going to be the weight, and the weight acts downwards, and weight equals mass times acceleration due to gravity, mg. So, what we've got here is a mass of 3 kilograms and then times that by g, the acceleration due to gravity, and the units will be newtons. And as usual, I'm going to take g as 9.8 meters per second per second if I use it on the calculator. What other forces have we got on this particle? Well, it's in contact with a surface, so there's going to be the normal contact force, which if you've been watching all my tutorials, you'll see that I always call R, R Newtons here. Are there any other forces acting on the particle? Well, it's on a smooth plane, okay, so there's not going to be any resistance to motion 
okay, coming from the roughness of the plane. There'll be no frictional force. So that's it, okay? It's a very common mistake to want to put in a forward force here. Just because one knows that the particle's going up in that direction, there's no engine on board this particle. There's nobody pushing it up, okay? It got its speed at the beginning here and then it was, as I say, just projected. So it's now going to decelerate due to what we'll see in a moment, the component of the weight down the plane. These are the only two forces then. What I would also encourage you to do, as always when you've got planes, is to draw a dotted line down there and mark in this angle here which is always the same as the angle of the plane. That's 20 degrees then in this case. Now, when it comes to finding this acceleration then, I'm going to consider Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, by resolving in the direction of motion, up the slope. So we illustrate that by putting R for resolving up the slope taking up the slope as positive. So what are the forces acting up the slope? Well, if we're looking in this direction parallel to the slope, then R has no effect because it's at right angles to the direction that we're resolving. But the weight of 3G Newtons, well part of this weight acts along the slope, parallel to the slope. And to see this, what I've done is drawn another diagram where I'm taking my 3G Newtons and splitting it into two components. And if you've been watching my other videos and looked up about resolving a force or splitting a force into two components, you'll know that this component the one that contains the angle between the weight and the direction you're resolving is going to be cosine, so it'd be 3g cos of 20 degrees, that'd be newtons, and the one down the plane, the one that excludes the 20 degrees, is always going to be the sine of that angle, so it'd be 3g sine of 20 degrees. That would be the force down the plane in Newtons. So we can imagine this diagram as being equivalent to this diagram. I wouldn't normally draw this, okay? but this is what's going on behind the scenes. When I think about resolving, I'm thinking about what force acts down the plane. Well, it's going to be this one here, 3G sine of 20 but it acts in the opposite direction to what we've got this arrow. Okay, Up the plane is taken as positive, but this force acts down the plane, so it's going to be negative. And this is the only force acting parallel to the plane. This component of the weight is perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in, so it has no effect. So this is the resultant force acting up the plane and according to Newton's second law then this force equals mass times acceleration. The mass is 3 and the acceleration we're trying to find is A. Okay, Now if you divide both sides by 3 you'll see that you get A equals minus G sine of 20 degrees. It's well worth noting, by the way, at this stage, that whatever your mass was for this particle, okay, if it was just m, you'd have minus mg sine 20 equals ma, and the m's would cancel. So you can see that the acceleration on an inclined plane, in this situation, is independent of the mass. Just well worth noting that, okay? Anyway, Work this out on your calculator and you find that you get A equals minus 3.3517 and so on. Okay, And that would be meters per second per second. Don't bother rounding this up. 
just leave it like that because we're going to need this when it comes to using our SUVAT equation to find out what S is. Okay? Because now we can pop our A into here as minus 3.3517 and so on meters per second per second. And we need to choose an equation that links these variables together so that we can find S. And it must be an equation that doesn't involve T. So what's that going to be? Well it's going to be an equation that you should be familiar with that is using V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now what I'm going to do is just remove this diagram because it's in the way now for the calculation but as I said earlier I wouldn't normally draw this diagram I would be aware of these forces in this diagram. Okay. So let's just remove this. Okay, so using v squared equals u squared plus 2as, what we've got is v, which is 0, so we have 0 squared equals u squared, that's going to be 2 squared, plus 2 times a, a is minus 3.3517, and so on, and that's multiplied by s, s for the displacement. So if we work this out, what we've got now is that 0 equals 4. And if you do that on your calculator, you end up with minus 6.7035 and so on. And that's going to be multiplied by S. So all we need to do is add 6.7035S to both sides. And let's just come down here. What would we therefore have? We're going to end up with S equals, well, we'd need to also divide both sides by the 6.7035. So we end up with S equals 4 divided by 6.7035. Okay, and notice how we've got a positive value now. Okay, so what does that work out to be? 0 0.5966 and so on. And so if we round that, say, to one decimal place, then we've got S equals 0 0.6, and the units will be meters to one decimal place. So the point is, in this question, make sure you do stick to your sign conventions for the directions, OK? So that your acceleration comes out negative, showing that it's decelerating, OK? And then pass that negative value directly into your SUVAT equation, taking upwards as positive, and the signs should all sort themselves out, and you end up with S being a positive value. Okay? So I hope that's given you some idea. And that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial.